Hi guys, it's Sophie. So today I'm going to be showing you some books I've read recently. Um, these aren't all in the last month, these are just some books I haven't spoken about because they aren't round the world books. I thought it'd be nice to share. Um, so, the one I'm going to start with is a fairly hefty one called Monochrome Home, um, and the photography is by Pella Ulin, and the book, the text in the book is by Hilary Robertson. Um, so this is a book all about homes that people design ugh, in black and white. Um, I'm trying to find some white ones as well. Um, or all like neutral toned colours, um, which is my kind of interior decorating style and has actually led to me redecorating my bedroom and painting it white, which has been really nice. Um, and my boyfriend was an absolute star helping me to do that. Um, and I'm really happy with how it looks. Um, I would show you, but we're just changing the bed sheets at the moment, so it's like in a state of, a, of array. But yes, I'm sure you'll see it soon enough. Um, I really enjoyed this. I really liked the style and the themes throughout. Um, I did think it was potentially a bit longer than it needed to be, um, but it was nice to have lots of different examples of the use of black and white and the ways in which it can be quite an interesting colour palette in, in on itself. Um, yeah, I really liked it. I think I definitely got some ideas um, about like, sort of woodwork, natural tones, concrete, all of those kind of things that you can play with as well as black and white. Next one is fiction and I read this one for my In Real Life book club. This is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. Um, this one everybody and their you know, mother has spoken about already um, but it's essentially the story of a young woman who is um, very socially anxious, very unaware of herself um, and her learning how to interact with people is how I describe it. Um, I think I gave it three out of five stars. So, so I liked it and I read it and it was fairly easy to read. Um, but I had some issues with um, what I saw as kind of a rescuing from mental illness or that kind of magical turning point, I guess. Um, I just don't feel it's particularly realistic. I feel that often people still struggle in the same cycles for quite a long time. And this felt potentially just like too short of a time. Um, it deals with alcoholism um, and abuse. So if either of those are triggers for you, then you may want to avoid it. Um, but yeah, I can see why loads of people really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of get the hype but I don't think I loved it as much as I thought I might. The next one's another non-fiction and that is Marguerite de Grasse, Suspended Passions. Now these are all taken from a set of interviews um, that she gave um, and it's just, they're just fabulous. Um, so, so someone asks her a question um, and she will then sort of just respond and that's how the whole thing is set out. Um, so it said, the East you reconstruct in your books is a de devastated place and I don't know to what extent it could be described as real. She said, I've experienced the East at the height of the colonial times and never been back since. But moreover, the veracity of so-called realism shouldn't be my concern. Um, yeah, it's just, they kind of, just her musings on things. Um, she is someone I definitely want to read more of. I need to, having read this one, read The Lover, which is her most famous book, um, which is about a love affair between a woman and I think an Asian man. Um, and for some reason, I think probably the timing of that was quite a big deal. Um, and it seems to be quite heavily autobiographical. Um, yeah, I have heard her quoted quite a lot in one of the other books I'm going to mention, which has led me to want to read more of her stuff. So yes, I'm going to get The Lover and see what I think of that one. Next, back to fiction again, we have We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. Um, I think I've spoken about this one briefly already, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I absolutely just ran through it. Um, it's really dark, but the writing is just just outstanding, the storytelling is fabulous. Um, I preferred this to the film, which I did really like, um, because I think there's more nuance as to whether or not characters are positive or negative and nature nurture. I think this is that's done better in the book than in the film. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what this book's about, um, it's a story of a mother whose son has committed an atrocity um, in a school. Um, he has killed a number of his fellow students and it's it's really her life and looking back on what happened leading up to this event and how much she influenced him and how much he was born to do those kinds of things anyway. Um, it's a big read but I think I read it in like three days just because I just loved it um, and I like this one much better than Big Brother which is the only other Lionel Shriver that I've read. Um, so The Mandibles is one I may pick up soon. Back to non-fiction again and we have The Two Kinds of Decay by Sarah Mangusu. Um, I spoke about this in my Dewey's video um, but I will just recap my thoughts here. Um, this is a memoir about a woman who is suffering from an autoimmune condition um, and she begins to realise that she has this condition at 21 um, and it essentially paralyses her body um, over time. Um, 
and it's writing, looking back on the events and trying to make sense of her experience I suppose and learning who she is outside of being ill and learning how to try and expect to have a life after that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I really loved it. I love her essay style and I loved Ongoing at the End of a Diary as well. So yeah, it just really hit the spot for me, really beautiful writing and um, just a beautiful, just a really lovely, beautiful way of telling the story as well. Um, yeah, if you are into kind of medical nonfiction or memoir, then I would recommend picking this one up. Next, we have How to Suppress Women's Writing by Joanna Russ, another one I finished um, during Dewey's. Um, and this one is about all the different ways in which um, women can be um, suppressed and pushed down when they do write. Um, so on the cover, it said she didn't write it, but it's clear that if she did the deed, she wrote it, but she shouldn't have. It's political, sexual, masculine, a feminist. She wrote it, but look at what she's writing at the bedroom, her kitchen, her family, other women. So it's all of the excuses that we can give for women's writing not being as valuable as men's writing. Um, and I enjoyed it. I think um, the it's not unapproachable at all, but it was not the kind of chatty essay style I really liked. I didn't get too much of her personality through. Um, and yeah, I think it's one that I will kind of carry with me in future when I'm thinking about what I'm reading rather than one that I feel stands particularly on its own. I rather would think about it in context, but that isn't a negative. I think some books are just like that. Um, I do think it's worthwhile reading if you're interested in the ways in which um, women and men are treated differently in the realms of literature. And then I have Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Mariana Machado, and this was one of my few five-star books of the year so far. Um, collection of short stories, just sexy, dirty, beautiful, gross stories. Um, yeah, I don't really want to spoil any of them. Like, I was thinking, like, oh, I'll tell them about the Green Ribbon. I'm, I don't want to tell you about the Green Ribbon. I just want to tell you that you should read it. Um, they're, they're just wonderful. I, I love stories that play with not just sex and sexuality, but, but also normalise that experience of passing between men and women. And I think because I'm someone who's bisexual, that's something I get so rarely in books, is the idea of a character being like, oh, they're with a man and then they're with a woman. And it not being some massive plot point, it just being their next sexual partner. Um, yeah, it was just, it was fabulous. There's, there's one um, in here where it goes through all of the partners that an individual has had, and I really, really enjoyed that one. I thought it was done really beautifully, and I think it's quite a hard thing to do. Um, so yeah, definitely go and read this. I follow her on Twitter, and I'm just waiting for more books to arrive, essentially. Um, so yeah, it was, it was just as good as everyone else says it is. Next, I have This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. If you watched my Dewey's video, you'll know that I kind of tried to push this on everyone. Um, it is overall funny with sad parts um, and it's essentially the story of a junior doctor in the NHS telling it like it is. Um, tiny little sections of his diary that he wrote throughout the time that he was training um, up to him becoming a registrar um, and it's just an insight into not only hospital life but kind of the inner lives of the people in the UK as well and like all the things that people don't want to know about, I don't know, I, I find it really amusing, um, obviously it was really sad in parts as well, um, but I think overall it was just it was just a nice book to have read, I think the hype around it is deserved, um, it isn't like a life changer, like um, When Breath Becomes Air was one that like, oh my heart, I still can feel the, eff like, the effort that book had from me, um, but I do think that it's quite an important one for like understanding the UK and the pressures on on our doctors, um, so if you have been tempted, go and buy it. Next I have one that I got on with for the first half, and for the second half it's like, oh, I'm kind of done now, um, and that is The Trip to Echo Spring by Olivia Lang. Um, the subtitle is On Writers and Drinking, which pretty much uh, sums up um, the idea behind this book. So she is looking at and trying to understand really alcoholism in authors, particularly like quite famous authors like F. Scott Fitzgerald, Hemingway, um, Tennessee Williams, and she's trying to understand what's driven these people to drink and whether the creative process has anything intrinsically linked to drinking. Um, and she kind of muses on alcoholism and also journeys and places and these writers and, and who they were as people. Um, and I think it was just a bit too long. Um, I think if it's something you're already interested in, definitely read it because her writing is lovely and I still enjoyed it even when I was kind of done with it. I felt it was kind of played through by about halfway through. Um, but I do think it would be worth it if you're so interested in it. Otherwise, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's better books that she's written. 
Um, and yeah, the Lonely City I prefer definitely to this. But I've never had anyone talk about this before and it opened up an avenue, I suppose, into these authors I'd never seen before. Um, so I'm glad, I'm really glad I read it, but I don't know that I'd necessarily recommend it to everyone else. Next I have Things I Don't Want To Know by Deborah Levy. And Deborah Levy and I, we've got on a bit more now. Um, so the start of this book says, that spring when life was very hard and I was at war with my lot and simply couldn't see where, where there was to get to, I seemed to cry most on escalators at train stations. Going down on them was fine, but there was something about standing still and being carried upwards that did it. From apparently nowhere, tears poured out of me, and by the time I got to the top and felt the wind rushing in, I did all my effort to stop myself from sobbing. Yeah, um, it's her life, it's writing, and I just felt such a deep connection with her. It was a little bit like Maggie Nelson and Bluettes for me. Um, I just kind of felt there and felt like I wanted to get on with this woman. Um, it was just lovely and her writing's really lovely and I, I read Hot Milk and I liked it but I didn't love it and I think potentially that was the other ones that was paired within the Mambuka, I might reread it because I also read The Cost of Living by Deborah Levy and really enjoyed this one as well which is the second half about um, her talking about femininity and womanhood and kind of a continuation of this autobiographical theme of her life and her writing. Um, yeah, I, I'm loving Deborah Lovey at the minute. I'm definitely going to be reading more of her and just kind of, just really enjoying her work. And I've seen a few other people who've been drawn to reading a bit more of her lately as well, which I think is really good um, because Bar Hot Milk, I hadn't read anything else by her and hadn't heard booktubers talking about her all that much. Um, so I'm glad to hear that she is coming back into fashion again. So that's everything I have for you today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little video and I'll see you guys again soon in my next one. Bye. Thank you.